Can you hear me? Okay, let's start. Hi everyone. In today's tutorial, we are going to review the last chapter of this course, which is the Z transform. Previously, we have learned the discrete time Fourier transform, which mapped a, a discrete time signal in the time domain to the frequency domain. And we denote it as the capital X e to the power j omega. Um, the, form, the formula is equal to the sum from minus infinity to infinity x n times e to the power minus j omega n. However, we have seen in the uh, lecture, the DTFT may not exist, for example, in the case of x n is equal to 2 to the power n u n. This is an instable signal because the sequence diverges. So when we calculate the DTFT, we have equation two here. Since the um, magnitude of two times e to the power minus j omega is equal to two, is larger than one. So we cannot obtain a finite result. So this is the reason why we want to extend the DTFT to the Z, Z transform. We extend the e to the power minus uh, e to the power j omega to z, which is a complex number equal to e to the power delta plus j omega. So previously, the e j to the power j omega it is a unicircle in the complex plane. Complex plane. We extend to the z. So now we can denote the entire complex complex plane. And z is a, a continuous complex number. So as our xz, it is a continuous signal in the complex domain. So one important thing in the z transform is also the region of convergence, the ROC, as we see in the Laplace transform. It indicates when the Z transform of a sequence will converge. Generally, uh, like the example before, there exists some um, signal such that the Z transform goes to infinity, which means that it does not converge. So we denote the set of values of Z when XZ converges, call, we call it the region of convergence. And the region of convergence, it must be speci specified along with the XZ in order to complete the Z transform. So when you do the homework six and it has some problem on the Z transform, when I ask you to calculate the Z transform, not only you write down the formula of XZ, but also alongside you should write the region of convergence also as well in the, in the exam. So we assume that Xn is of infinite length. We can decom decompose the Xz to two parts. The first part we denote it as X minus Z. The first part is X plus Z. The X plus Z is equal to the sum from N equals to zero to infinity x n z to the power minus n and x minus n x minus z is the negative n from minus infinity to minus one we can also change the variable to to positive so we use n equal from one to infinity and we change it to x minus n times z to the power n so we use a function f n z to substitute x n z to the power minus n. Then we expand x plus z as the following equation is x zero z to the power minus zero plus x one z to the power minus one. And then we sum to x n to the z to the power minus n. 
and which is equal to F0 D plus F1 D and plus Fn D and so on and so on. The reason we want to expand it is that we can use the ratio test of the geometric sequence. The convergence of X plus Z will require that that we take when we take the limitation of n goes to infinity and the absolute value of f n plus one z divided by f n z should be less than one. This is I I forgot to write that it should requires to be less than one. So we want to prove in which region the Z transform will converge. First we let, uh, we denote the limitation n to the power, um, when n goes to infinity, the absolute of x n plus one divided by x n. This limitation we denote it as r positive r, r plus, it's, it's a positive number. So the x plus z will converge as we see, it requires the limitation to be less than one. And we substitute the Fn plus one Z, which is equal to Xn plus one Z to the power minus N minus one. And we get this term, the limitation, when N goes to infinity, Xn plus one D divided by Xn times the absolute of z to the power of minus one is less than one. And we move the term to the right, we get this equation 12. When the absolute value of z is larger than the limitation, which is equal to r plus, we will have the region of convergence. The region of convergence for x plus z is the absolute when the absolute value, the, the magnitude is greater than R plus. So this is like the case A to the power N times UN. In the course, we call it the right-sided signals. So the right-sided signal will have, will have the uh, region of convergence that is outside of the poles. Similarly, we have the second part, which is the X minus Z. It will converge um, when we use the X, when we denote the limitation of M goes to infinity X minus M divided by X minus M minus one, which is equal to R minus. Well, we also require the limitation of f n plus one z divided by f n z goes, uh, the limitation should be smaller than one. And we can have the magnitude of z is smaller than r minus. So the region of convergence of the left side is the magnitude of z should be smaller than r minus. When we combine, combining these results, the, the region of convergence of the ROC for XZ is that the magnitude of Z should be greater than R plus, but smaller than R minus. So when R plus is smaller than R minus, the ROC is a ring. But when R plus is greater than R minus, there will, will not be ROC and the XZ will not exist. We also have the poles and zeros in the Z transform. The values of Z for which XZ equal to zero are called the zeros of XZ. And the values of Z for which XZ equals to infinity are the poles of the XZ. So this figure shows the ROC for X plus Z for the right-sided signal, it, it is outside the poles. And for X 
minus Z, the left-sided signal, the ROC will be the inside part, inside the circle. And for XZ, when R minus is greater than R plus, the ROC is the ring shape like region. So when R minus is smaller than R plus, the, the XZ will not exist and there is no ROC. We also studied the properties of the Z transform. The, the transformation have quite similar properties with the Fourier transform as um, also the discrete time Fourier transform. The first property is the linearity. If we have two signals, the first one is Xn and the ROC is R1. The second signal is Yn and with the Z transform Yz, the ROC is R2. Then if we have the linear combination of Xn and Yn, which is A Xn plus Byn, the Z transform of the new signal is equal to a, the linear combination of the Z transform of the previous signals, which is equal to AXZ plus BYZ. We notice that the ROC of the new signal will contain the intersection of R1 and R2. The meaning of the contains is that the intersection of these two ROC, it, it is at least in the ROC of the new signals, but it's not saying that the new ROC is equivalent to the intersection. The second property is the time shifting. The time shifting, um, the first, our original signal is Xn, the Z transform is Xz with ROC equal to R. If we shift N, N0 unit in the time domain, the Z transform of the new signal is equal to Z to the power minus N0 times XZ, and the ROC is unchanged, except for some possi possible addition or deletion of Z equals to zero or Z equals to infinity. This is the time shifting property. So the operation of the shifting property is like the same as in the discrete time Fourier transform. The important thing is that you should remember whether the ROC is changed or unchanged when we, uh, when we talk about the properties of the Z transform. The next property is the time reversal. The time reversal, uh, which is X minus N, the Z transform of X minus N is equal to X one over Z with, with the region of convergence as one over R. And the meaning of one over a set, it means that if a point is in the set, the zero, the Z, zero is in R, then one over Z zero is in the set one over R. This is the meaning of the reciprocal of a set. We also have some operation in the Z domain. The first one is the Z domain scaling. Um, in the time domain, it is a multi multiplication. So if we scale xz to xz over z0, and also we scale the ROC to z, the absolute value of z0 times r, we will have the signal in time domain as z0 to the power n times xn. The, the ROC its radius times the absolute value of Z0, but the direction of it, whether it is inside or outside, it is unchanged. The last property, it is, oh, 
it is not the last one. Um, the next one is Z domain differentiation. So if it, if the Z transform X Z, it is complex differentiable and we have the minus Z, D X Z, D Z, the RC is unchanged. In time domain, it will equal to N times X N. So you, you may refer to lecture slides to see the proof and also the examples. The last one is the convolution. So if our input is Xn with Z transform Xz and ROC is equal to R1. And the impulse response in the time domain is Hn and the frequency response is Hz with ROC equal to R2. Hc, also called the transfer function. If uh, we want to get output yn is the convolution of xn and hn. In the z domain, the y, the capital yz is equal to the capital xz times hc. Sorry, there's a typo. Uh, it should be hc. Also, the re um, the ROC of the YN of YZ should contain R1, the intersection of R1 and R2. So that this is the pro convolution property. So let's see an example. A system is described by the following differential equation with zero initial condition. So this is the relationship of Yn and Xn. Yn plus 0.1, Yn minus 1, minus 0.21, Yn minus 2 is equal to Xn plus Xn minus 1. First, uh, you have to determine the impulse response Yn due to the impulse, response, impulse sequence Xn equal to delta n. The second question is to determine the system response Yn due to the unit step function excitation, where the Un is equal to one when n is greater than or equal to zero. So you have two minutes to think about this problem.
So let's see the solution. We take the Z transform on both sides and we have the YZ plus 0.1 YZ Z to the power minus one. Here we use the shifting property in the time domain and minus 0.2 YZ times Z to the power minus two. It is equal to the right side is XZ plus XZ times Z to the power minus one. And we apply that when X n is equal to delta n, the Z, Z transform of the delta n is equal to one. We apply this on the right side. We have, it is equal to one plus Z to the power of minus one. And we, we move this term one plus 0.1 Z to the power of minus one minus 0.2 Z to the power of minus two to the right side, we get the formula of yz. So the numerator is one plus z minus z to the power minus one, and the denominator is this. It is the coefficient. And to solve this, we need to multiply the numerator and the denom denominator by z the square of z. So the new, the now the numerator is the square of z plus z and the denominator is the square of z plus 0.1z minus 0.2. And we can get it is equal to z times z plus one and the denominator is equal to z minus 0.4 times Z plus 0.5. We move one Z to the left. So YZ divided by Z is equal to Z plus one divided by Z minus 0.4 times Z plus 0.5. And we can split it to two terms. The first term is A divided by Z minus 0.4. The second term is B divided by Z plus 0.5. So how can we get the constants A and B? To calculate A, we observe that the denominator of A is Z minus 0.4. So we multiply both left, left hand side and right hand side Z minus 0.4 so that um, we can remove the denominator and we have this term multiplied by z point z minus 0.4. So when we when we set the z to be 0.4, we can eliminate the constant b here. So and also the y z divided by z times z minus 0.4, it is eliminate this term. It it is equal to z plus one divided by z plus 0.5 and we substitute z equal to 0.4 here, we can get the constant a should be 1.56. Similarly for the b, the denominator of b is equal to z plus 0.5. So we multiply both sides z plus 0.5. So we uh, eliminate this term and we multiply Z plus 0.5 at this term. And we, when we say set the Z to be minus 0.5, we can eliminate the constant A. And we have on the right hand side only the only B here. And the left hand side, we multiply Z plus 0.5 and it is equal to Z plus one divided by Z minus Point point four. So now we substitute z equals to minus 0.5 into the equation. We get the constant b should be minus 0 0.56. So yz will be equal to 1.56 1, 1. divided by z minus 0.4 plus the minus 0 0.56 divided by z plus 0.5. And we can get 
the result of y n because previously we discussed the the z transform of a to the power n u n so we can now um we we didn't use the inverse z transform we just observed the, the formula of y z so we can get the y n is equal to one point five five six times 0.4 to the power n u n minus 0.56 and minus 0.5 to the power n times u n. So this is the first question. Where is the z? Z is in the denominator of y z. Oh. oh, okay. In the numerator, yes, it, it should have a z here. z here and z here because the yz divided by z is equal to 2a divided by z minus 0.4 plus b divided by z plus 0.5. Yeah, so there, is a, there are two typos here. The yz should um, both the numerator and denominator, we have the z, but the result is um, will will be the <clears throat> yeah. So the the z transform of a to the power n u n is equal to y z equal to z divided by z minus a. Yeah. So the second question asks that if the input is equal to the unit step function u n, then what will be the re, um, output? The z transform of the unit function x z is equal to z divided by z minus one. And previously we have the relation the transfer function is equal to this relationship and we have the yz now the xz is equal to z divided by z minus one and the second term is the transfer function which is also called hz now we um we also multiply z square to the both the numerator and denominator and we have this form. Uh, I'll eliminate the intermediate steps. You can do it by yourself. Uh, like I said before, you, you set to A divided by Z minus one, um, B minus divided by Z minus 0.4 and C divided by Z plus 0.5. And then you calculate the constant A, B and C. So, uh, I strongly suggest you to do it by yourself. So then you can get the formula of yz and we can trans, um, get the final result yn, which is equal to the, this term. The first one, because it, it is one. So one to the power n is one. We have is 2.22 un minus 1.04 times 0.4 to the power n u n. And the second term is minus 0.19 and minus 0.5 to the power n u n. So this is the example. Okay, so that is the content of this today's tutorial. In next week's tutorial, um, we are going to review review the course. And so do you have some parts that you are confused? So you want, want me and the other TA to talk more details, you can, you can email to us or you can type in the chat window, like um, which chapter you need more, more explanations, more examples or like homeworks, the test, do you have some question or confusion? <laughs> yeah, the tips of the final exam is to 
um, review the slides and you can do the examples. Okay, so the property of the signal and also the transformation, right? Yeah, so to prepare for the final exam, I strongly suggest you first review the slides and do the examples and do it step by step. And the second one to review the, the questions and test because we have provided solutions so you can review all this. And I think the, because the final exam will, um, I think it will be quite similar difficulty to the test, just longer. It will, it will be not quite difficult. Okay. More examples of convolution. Uh, okay, I see. Thank you. Bye-bye.